Hi everyone and welcome to this quick Cutter tutorial where we're going to see how to make a 2D point-and-click navigation system. By the end of the video, you'll know how to get a mouse click on the screen and the position of the cursor and how to have a unit navigate to this clicked position in a clever way while avoiding the walls or obstacles on its way. Of course, as usual, don't forget that if you want to get the files of the tutorial directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my Godot tutorials over here. Also, since we'll be coding in c -sharp, make sure that you're using a version of Godot with .NET enabled. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn more about 2D tools for your future Godot for c -sharp Com projects, then go ahead and check out my brand new short read ebook, Lavmana Mini 2D Platformer. This quick, practical guide will teach you the fundamentals of doing 2D games in this game engine, with essential notions like tile maps, 2D physics, animations, character controllers, and more. You'll even see how to build your very own 2D platformer game, step by step. So if you want to discover some 2D tricks for your next God of War game in just about 100 pages and for a low price, don't hesitate to have a look at the Gamerot page. But anyway, with all that said, Let's dive in and discover how to set up a simple 2D point-and-click navigation system in God of War and C Sharp. Alright, to begin with, let's see how to have a unit go to a target position when we click in a scene, regardless of the actual obstacles in the level. To do this because we're working in 2D, it's actually quite simple. We really just need to use Godot's built-in input event handling hook, the input method, and check for a mouse click. So, suppose that we have a unit node, that is a character body 2D, so it's movable via code, but it still works with physics, as we discussed a while ago in this other episode of the series. We'll give it a new C-sharp script called unit.cs, and inside it we'll override our input method to define our own event handling logic. More precisely, we'll start by checking that our input is indeed a mouse click. To do this, we usually stack three checks together. First, we validate that our input event is of type input event mouse button, using the C sharp is button. Then, we check that the mouse button was just released and not pressed. And finally, we check that the button that was pressed was the right one. Note that, of course, you could totally check whether the left mouse button was just pressed simply by switching up those checks, and that's totally up to you and to your specific use case. But okay, now if we add a print in this if block and run our game, we see that we do get the debug in the console every time we click on the background. So all that's left to do is to get the actual position of the click, which is stored in the e.position variable, and mark it as the current target position for our unit. Also, just to be safe, we should make sure that the target position is initialized to a unit's start position in the ready function, otherwise it might just try and go to some default location. Then we'll define some arbitrary speed value and cut up a very basic move logic for our unit using its physics process method. Here, I'll reuse the concepts that we discussed in the previous episode of the series on the 2D character controller. So basically, I'll compute the difference between the target position and the current position of my unit to get the direction of my movement and normalize it. Then I'll multiply it by the speed parameter to compute the velocity of my character body 2D. And finally, I'll call its built-in move and slide function to really apply this velocity. Also, we should actually check if the distance between our current position and our target position is below some arbitrary threshold, in which case we'll just say that we've arrived and we'll interrupt our computation. At this point, if we run our game again, you see that whenever we click in the scene, our unit starts to move towards the point that we just clicked and it stops when it's reached it. But of course, for now, this movement technique is a bit too basic and it doesn't take the actual shape of the level into account. The unit is basically ignoring the asteroids, and so it gets stuck on them. So let's see how to fix this, thanks to Godot's built-in navigation tools. In order to have our unit move about the level in an intelligent way, meaning having it avoid the obstacles and plan its route according to the asteroids on the way to the target point, 
we're going to use Godot's built-in navigation system. This is a quick and easy way to integrate an A-star-based path computation feature in our games, and it first requires us to tell the engine what areas units can or can't walk into, so that it can then auto-deduce the best series of positions to go through to reach a given point. More precisely, to get all this working, we first need to add a new navigation region to the node. This node will hold a navigation mesh that determines where the navigation agents can walk, and so wherever there are obstacles in our level, those will create holes in the mesh to prevent our units from going to the spots. So once we've added a navigation region to the node to our scene, we need to go to its inspector and give it a new navigation polygon resource to define the overall area for our navigation computation. Typically, in our case, we can just make a big rectangle that encompasses the whole level. Then, we'll move our asteroids inside this new navigation region to the node, as children. This way, because our walls are static bodies with colliders, and you also see that our nav mesh past geometry type is set to detect both meshes and static colliders by default, it will automatically see those asteroids as navigation obstacles and so it will punch holes in the mesh around them to prevent units from walking there. To actually compute the nav mesh and check that it indeed takes those obstacles into account, we just needed to use the bake button at the top of the viewport window that is available whenever our navigation region to the node is selected. You see that this instantly overlays a bluish layer on our scene that shows us the navigation mesh our nav agents will be able to use. It's limited to the rectangular zone that we defined earlier, and it has some holes wherever we have an asteroid, as expected. Though if you want to change the margins around the reference static colliders, typically to avoid the units trying to plan a course too close to the asteroid, you might want to change some settings in the nav mesh. In particular, in the agents section, you may need to check and tweak the radius value to get something more natural. But of course, now to really test this out, we need to turn our unit into an actual navigation agent so that it uses this brand new nav mesh for its movement. Now on the hierarchy side, turning our basic unit into a 2D nav agent is really simple. We just need to give our object a new navigation agent 2D child node. You might obviously want to play a bit with the parameters of this agent in the inspector, but other than that, this is the only thing that we have to do to make our unit an app agent. Cause the real magic happens in the movement script of our unit, where we need to replace our basic movement logic with one that uses this new nav agent node. So first of all, let's make sure that we get a reference to our agent child node in our ready function. With that in place, we can now update our input event handler so that instead of setting some local target points, it instead sets the target position of the nav agent node itself. Basically, just by assigning this value to the target position field of our 2D nav agent, we're having it compute and store the best path to this point from our current position that takes into account the nav mesh of our scene and avoids all the obstacles on the way. Although a little improvement can be to force the position that we use as the target to actually be on the nav mesh by getting the nearest point to the one that was clicked on this mesh. This way, if we decide to click on an obstacle to mark it as the target location, our unit will still prepare a valid path. Then to truly walk this path, we need to update our logic in the physics process method. Rather than just aiming for the target point, we're going to use our agent's getNextPathPosition method to retrieve the next point in the path that is computed, so the intermediary point that we should be aiming at for now and that we can use as target point for this frame. Meaning that, in fact, we just needed to replace our previous click target with this new intermediate path point in our difference computation, and then the rest of the function can remain identical. Also, to replace our previous threshold proximity check, we can instead use our agent parameters and just check whether our agent has reached its destination, so if its navigation is finished or not, and if so, then we'll exit early. Now, if we run our game with those new updates, 
you'll notice two things. First, the unit cleverly moves around the level according to a nav mesh, and it doesn't just run into obstacles anymore. Second, it doesn't rotate properly as it moves, so it's gliding in a pretty weird way. To solve this, we just need to use the character body 2D's built-in lookat method and give it the position of the next point in the navigation path as input. Of course, depending on how your unit hierarchy is set up exactly, and in particular how your sprite is anchored to the body itself, you may also need to rotate the sprite in the editor to properly match the movement. And also, just in case you're curious, if you want to initialize your nav agent, and so its initial target position in particular, you need to be careful because you can't do this call just in the ready function like we did before. Indeed, because the navigation utilities take a frame to set up and initialize, you need to actually defer this call and wait for a physics frame to have passed before you can do anything with your nav agent. You can find an example of how to do this in the official Godot docs at this address. But anyway, here we go! Our unit now moves and rotates properly, meaning that whenever we click in our scene, it goes to the clicked position while avoiding all the asteroids thanks to our nav mesh. So here you are! You now know how to set up a basic 2D point-and-click navigation system in Godot thanks to the engine's built-in navigation utilities. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. It always helps when you join the community and you show your support. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.